It's once again time to talk about one of my favorite movies of all time, Meet the Feebles. I'm not joking. What appears to be a tasteless, crude comedy featuring weirdly designed puppets is in actuality a lot more than people give it credit for. We'll talk about that a little bit more later on, but what I would like to address, thanks to the Masters of Fate, is how this strange experiment came to be. When you look Meet the Feebles up on YouTube, all you're gonna find are people going, Ah, this movie's insane! Or talking about how the movie's now canon with the Muppets. We'll talk about that at the end. But right now, it's time to discuss the complete history of Meet the Feebles. It's 1987. Peter Jackson just got off his first film, Bad Taste, which didn't do the best critically or commercially, but it got his career started, so that was good enough for him. His next movie, Brain Dead, also known as Dead Alive, had a hard time getting off the ground because funding consistently fell through. Therefore, Jackson and his team decided to go with one of their B concepts, one that they had brewing in the background but weren't exactly sure if they were going to fully pursue. That concept was known as... nothing, it, it didn't have a title yet, but it did have a concept. An extremely adult parody of the classic franchise, The Muppets. It started off as a sketch, then the plans expanded to have it become a television pilot slash proof of concept of sorts. But then, Jackson and his team were surprised when they got some Japanese investors all excited about the project. These investors believed that this concept would work best as a feature-length film. And thus, Meet the Feebles was born. Brainstorming began at once. A story was outlined and a script came near immediately after. This movie, now known as Meet the Feebles, would greatly depart from its Muppet-based origin as time went on. At the beginning of production, there were a lot of ties to the Muppets, like having a large pink female lead who's played by a man, or having most of the puppet creatures be animals like the Muppets, but being animals that the Muppets would not dare represent. Animals like flies, worms, rats, or cockroaches. But from there, things began to change. It morphed into this commentary on the worst parts of humanity, essentially having the mission statement, what if we had the worst aspects of showbiz put under one roof for one day with only a couple innocent people throughout and left everybody to their own devices? The resulting product ended up touching on things like pedophilia, grooming, AIDS, manipulation, egotism, exploitation, and so much more. Peter Jackson has always had a strong attention to detail, as we can see from the Lord of the Rings trilogy, and I believe that Meet the Feebles is the first movie in his filmography that shows it off. On the surface, it's a revolting comedy that's meant to turn your stomach, but then when you start looking into the movie, and of course see it more than once, you see it as an interesting character study with each new viewing presenting something new. I'm not exaggerating when I say just about every time I see this movie, I pick up on something new. And for the longest time I thought he was an alligator, but no, he's a frog. Wait. He's not an alligator? I thought he was a newt or a salamander. No, he's a, he's a frog. Because uh, the Vietnam thing is called Frog of War. Also of note is that the movie would be a musical, but would not take place in a musical world. Because the Feebles are a theater troupe, all the songs that would be in this movie would be performances or rehearsals in-universe. So you're not going to see Bletch burst out a cane and top hat and sing about how evil he is, unless you're talking about the stage adaptation. With his vision now firmly in place, it was now time for Jackson to seek funding from the New Zealand Film Commission. And unfortunately, in doing so, Jackson would commit one of the biggest mistakes when it came to making something with puppets in it, at least according to Bear in the Big Blue House star Noel McNeil, he vastly underestimated how much this would cost. Puppets are not cheap to make. And for some reason, Jackson believed that a movie consisting entirely of puppets would only cost 750,000 New Zealand dollars to make, which he didn't end up getting any of. Yeah, apparently the New Zealand Film Commission didn't have any faith in this project, so they initially denied all funding. It was only through intense negotiations that Jackson was able to get $700,000, making the budget even less than it should have been, and they were already missing the mark by quite a lot. Nevertheless, Jackson decided to persist. 
Because the movie was low budget and frankly had to spend more money than they were willing to on puppets, the cast was relatively small, with many actors playing several roles. To disguise their voices and help them feel like different characters, Many of the voices that were used were impressions of celebrities, like Trevor's being an impression of Peter Lorre. I thought Dennis does Daisy. Or Winyard's being an impression of Christopher Lloyd. Have you ever noticed the beautiful lighting in this toilet? The dialogue was recorded in three days. And after listening to some of the recordings back at his house, Jackson was starting to get hyped about this project. Oh sure, he'd always been excited before, but now? This could be something that could rival or top bad taste. Brain Dead can wait. Right now, it's all about the feebles. With the dialogue out of the way, now the hard parts were gonna come in. Most notably, crafting the puppets. Jackson had a very specific vision in mind for each and every one of them, so he constantly came in with notes on what should be changed or what should be scrapped causing them to burn through a lot of their <clears throat> feeble budget. As a result, many cost-cutting measures had to be taken to make up for this excessive spending. The film would largely be shot in the St. James Theater or a railway station, many of the outfits worn by the puppets would be found second-hand, and every car in the film would be exactly the same. And then it came time to building the set. Once again, many corners had to be cut, Every set that didn't come pre-built in the railway station or theater was either made from recycled material, cardboard, or cheap plywood. Whatever it takes, right? Additionally, they also decided to have the Vietnam segment, also codenamed Frogs of War, be shot in somebody's backyard. Also, there's a rumor going around saying that one of the reasons that Meet the Feebles was able to get any funding whatsoever was because of the Vietnam segments, but I was unable to find any verification on that, so take that with a grain of salt. And if the New Zealand Film Commission didn't go for the rest of this movie, I don't see how poking fun of the Vietnam War would change their minds. While everybody took their time when it came to filming, everything had to be rushed. They were already behind schedule as is. It's believed that because of the low budget, it was expected that Meet the Feebles would have a quick turnaround time, once again showing that Jackson, who only had one movie under his belt so far, didn't quite grasp the undertaking he took on. Not helping was that, while well, yes, everybody was having fun, the working conditions were less than ideal. It was freezing in that railway yard, causing everybody to bundle up whenever they could. And even that wasn't enough. Jackson was also starting to show some rampant perfectionism at first, wanting to be the only cameraman and being very specific with every detail that would be performed. But eventually, even Jackson's attention to detail had to be put to the side. They were running out of time. The film was already way past the due date. So several mistakes had to be left in the final product, such as poor lighting in some of the latter half of the film, or having strings being very visible on the marionette versions of The Fly and Sebastian. Jackson himself stated that if they had all the time in the world, they would have gone back to fix these mistakes. But the fact is, they were on borrowed time. There was nothing they could do. And then eventually, the movie ran out of money. With all the sets they had to blow up and all the puppets they had to repair, that was it. The movie had to just make do with whatever it had left and then be done. Then finally, Meet the Feebles was ready to be released. Except nobody really knew that it was coming out. Marketing was sparse. And even then, one of the only bits of advertising it had was one of the worst trailers that I've ever seen. I'm not saying that because it only advertises the gross bits, that's kinda what the film's trying to sucker you in with, but it tells you to not give away the ending of the film while giving away the ending as the line is spoken. Please, don't tell your friends how it all comes out in the end. Yippee! How do I, do that? I, I mean, look at this, come on, that's inexcusable. As for the movie's release date, that's kind of a complicated question. To this day, Meet the Feebles is still getting release dates around the world. Some of the nationwide release dates are as follows. New Zealand, December 8th, 1989. Sweden, November 16th, 1990. Japan, December 7th, 1990. Australia, March 29th, 1991. The United Kingdom, April 10th, 1992. The United States, August 20th, 1993. Then again, September 1st, 1995.
Spain, December 12th, 2012, and most recently, Uruguay, February 26th, 2022. People are still releasing Meet the Feebles in 2022? Well, I know where I gotta move to. Oh, by the way, there's also not gonna be an Irish release date anytime soon because this movie is still, to this day, banned in all of Ireland. You guys are missing out. Unfortunately, Meet the Feebles bombed hard at the box office, partially because it didn't play in a lot of theaters, but also because the theaters that it was playing in weren't able to sell tickets because nobody knew what it was. It only grossed 80,000 New Zealand dollars in its original release. Thankfully, Jackson was able to pick himself up pretty quickly after the Feebles disaster, moving right on to Brain Dead. In terms of home video, Meet the Feebles is kind of all over the place. Not only is the company who owns the rights to Meet the Feebles uninterested in any legitimate home media releases, but they also don't give a crap about enforcing their copyright. So tons of bootleg VHS tapes and DVDs have made their way into the market. Buyer beware. I bought one of these once and it was a terrible quality rip. If you're gonna watch the movie, watch it online. Don't waste your money on these bootlegs like I did. In later years, Meet the Feebles would be posted to several websites all throughout the world. That way you can watch the movie in its entirety, exposing it to a new generation of fans. Except there's one small problem. The movie that people are watching on YouTube and Dailymotion and the like, that's the PAL version with pitched up audio. For instance, the intro song's not supposed to sound like this. Meet the Feebles! Meet the Feebles! We're not your average, ordinary people! It's supposed to sound like this. Meet the Feebles! Meet the Feebles! We're not your average, ordinary people! Eh, but that's minor, it's okay. Thanks to the internet, a small yet passionate fandom based around Meet the Feebles had formed. People appreciated the characters and the subtle story elements, and yes, even the shock and awe humor. However, for every one person that appreciates Meet the Feebles for what it is, there were at least five other people that would see Meet the Feebles as perfect reaction video material because ew, it's gross. Which, uh, yeah, it is kind of unnerving, and yes, some of the Meet the Feebles reaction videos are quite nice, but I wish it would get a little bit more mainstream recognition, you know? The most recent news regarding Meet the Feebles, aside from its release in Uruguay at least, is that it was actually mentioned by Peter Jackson himself in the new Muppet show Muppet Mayhem. And several people have asked me what I thought of this, and uh, I don't like it. I love the fact that Peter Jackson's acknowledging one of his old movies, of course, and that it's getting some attention from the very thing that initially inspired it. But listen to what Jackson has to say. Yeah, it was a bad night. You know, two of the Feebles were in witness protection and the rest were in prison. Okay, so if you have seen the movie, you would know that that's not what happened. Most of the Feebles are dead, one is in witness protection, and everybody else is living a normal life. But if you haven't seen the movie, it did what that trailer said not to do, and it gave away the ending. I know it's nitpicky and it doesn't really matter, but come on, it's the first mainstream attention that Meet the Feebles has gotten, and it's a spoiler that spoils the basic plot but gets the specifics wrong? Alright, I'll still take it. So yeah, that's the history of Meet the Feebles, folks. A story that's just as wild as the film itself. I hope it was worth it. And I hope we get that official remaster at some point in the future. We do have that fan-made one that was posted not too long ago. So until we get the official release, if you want to check the movie out, this is the version to see. Maybe someday I'll talk about the history of some of Peter Jackson's other early movies. Ah, one step at a time. We'll wait until that time comes. Fun fact, I guess. During the COVID-19 pandemic, I was desperate for something to do, as most of us were. So, with the help of my good friend Billy HL, who is not a fan of this movie, just for fun, I ended up writing a stage adaptation of Meet the Feebles. There are obviously some changes put in place to make it work on stage, but overall, I'm still proud of it to this day. And if you're wondering if we'll ever perform it for real... <laughs> oh, that's a good one, good one. Well, folks, thanks for watching the video. What'd you guys think? What are your thoughts on Meet the Feebles, and what do you think is the craziest part of the story? Comment below and let me know, because I'm always excited to hear what you guys have to say. 
And now, it's time to thank our wonderful Patreon people, starting with our Masters of Fate. Chan 11, Drew the Stew, Ellis Amir Rogers Archer, Kev Messick, Platinum Bass, Quiet Chap, Ryan Williams, Timey, and Woody Woo. And now, our executive producers, Alba Robinson, Blackjack, H.R. Hoffman, Indiscreet One, Leaf Storm, Ravioli Supremo, Unkale, and who else but Zane? If you two would like your name read at the end of every Media Mementos video, then please consider donating to the Patreon. There's a link in the description below for you to check out. There are also links to the Media Mementos Discord server, as well as the second channel, Media Mementos Extra, where we have behind the scenes videos, short clips, and other sorts of subjectively entertaining things. Alright folks, thanks for watching the video, and remember, you can't suppress the media, Harry! Yeah, I've seen this movie way too many times.